talk, shop, pop, movies. Ahoy there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop open, that is, movies and physical media. And today, pop we shall. That hurt. They hit my face. Um, <laughs> so, in honor of the Aero Video sale this month, I went and did a little Aero Video purchase. But I did not get them from Aero Video, nor did I buy them from Barnes & Noble during their half-off sale, which is going on through the end of the month. Give it a look. This package, for anyone who knows it, they know it, because no one else packages their movies like this, is from Hamilton Books. And I mentioned them multiple times in my Aero Video videos. videos. I did earlier in the month, because they have a really good deal on a good chunk of Aero Video titles. So, why did I go for this? instead of the Barnes & Noble sale. Two reasons. One, there wasn't a ton I wanted during the sale. I mean, uh, it's that simple. I would grab Hugo and that's about it. Uh, number two, I would rather get a 4K remastered Blu-ray for 70% of the retail price over a 4K Blu-ray of the same film for almost three times the cost. So I'll go over how much each of these were and learn how much they are from Barnes & Noble during the sale, let alone not during the sale, when they are almost twice as much. So let's get into this before I forget what I'm doing. Oh yeah, get it. A little strippy doodad goes like all the way around, eh, like that, eh, eh. and then it like breaks in half. Popular titles that may interest me. Oh, isn't that adorable? I don't know if I mentioned it. But I got, I'm just gonna throw that on the floor. I got eight titles, all Aero Video titles. Only one of them, ooh, one actually has a slipcover still. That's amazing. Two of them do. That's impressive because they're kind of old releases. I'm surprised they have slipcovers still. Only one of them is a 4K. We will get to that when we get to that. Like I said, I think almost every one of these movies has a 4K from Aero, like half of them at least. But I opted to get the Blu-rays because, like I said, they have 4K scans. And a lot of them were released the same day as the 4K. So it's the same scan and it looks pretty much as good. Like, an amazing looking Blu-ray from an amazing company like Arrow looks basically as good as an average 4K at least. That's what I'm getting at. So, no more rambling. Uh, the first one I got, this one was $11.95 on Blu-ray. All of these, for the most part, were that price. And this has a slipcover, and I am amazed it does. And that is Pitch Black. I forgot this even had a slipcover. I think this was one of the weird ones where the 4K did not have a slipcover, but the Blu-ray did. Why? I don't know. And that's a cool cover. You want to see what the other part of it looks like? I kind of do. Let's get into it. Okay, this is mainly just to see if the cover is different from the uh, case. I like, I like that. That's weird. Why? Out of all my Aero Video titles I already own, I think only like one or two actually have slip covers, so that's why I'm impressed any of these two, considering how old they are. Ah, yes, I was right. It has the Sun slip cover, and then this is like the regular cover, so I think the 4K looks like this. But you don't get the cool slip cover, so that's neat that I got that for $11.95. I'm not going to open every one of these, but I knew this one had the slip cover, so I thought I would open it. There's the disc, and then the reversible cover art is that of the slipcover. Uh, I haven't watched this movie since it came out. <laughs> like, what, rented it off DirecTV, wherever the hell it was back in the day. It's a weird, slipcover's weird feeling. It's like, I don't know if it's like a matte thing, but it's almost like, it has like resistance, like it's sticky, like rubber. <laughs> but who knows? Probably just been in the warehouse for seven years. Anyways, I haven't watched this since it came out before Vin Diesel got way too big for his britches, you know? And it, I didn't care for the other Riddick things. I couldn't give a shit. He's like the coolest thing in this movie because the movie doesn't completely revolve around him. He's just an interesting character in a weird little sci-fi movie. But then when he took it over and tried to make it this 
big thing. It's like, who, no one gives a shit. Just, <laughs> sorry, Vin. Nobody cares. At least I didn't. And uh, this next one, also a Blu-ray. This one I don't think has a 4K yet. I'm expecting it to get one. I'm honestly surprised it hasn't by now. Uh, it stars Vin Diesel's best friend, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and that is Southland Tales. Woo, Southland Tales. Is it really blurry or is it just my glasses? Am I insane? Is that a little better? Was it really blurry? I was at a theme park all day, very moist. Can you see that better now? I look less out of focus. I think. <laughs> there we go. With, uh, what's her name? Sean William Scott and Sarah Michelle Gellar. There you go. This is from the director of Donnie Darko. This is a very weird love it or hate it movie, for the most part. I thought it was interesting enough to give another watch. That's basically where I sit. It's very long. It's almost two and a half hours long of straight up batshit crazy weird sci-fi stuff with a random song by Justin Timberlake thrown in the middle there. But if you like Donnie Darko, or even if you don't like Donnie Darko, give this one a try. A lot of people really love it out there. I think Ryan, with movies, with Ryan Ryan, that Ryan we all know, uh, he loves this movie, if I'm not mistaken. So give it a shot. If Ryan likes it, it can't be that bad. Unless it's Sucker Punch, then it sucks. Uh, okay, <laughs> this one just got a 4K, but like I said before, this has a 4K scan. And this Blu-ray is only, what, from 2021, I wanna say? So you know it's gonna look pretty damn good. And that is The Last Starfighter. I like The Last Starfighter enough to pay $11.95 for a brand new Arrow Blu-ray of it. Not so much to buy a $25 half off 4K of it. So Hamilton Books, especially if you're only, if you don't care about 4Ks as much as some folks, and you can settle for a Blu-ray once in a while like I did now, I'm glad I did. Because The Last Starfighter is a fun one. I've only watched this one time, and it was probably like 18 years ago. So I'm due for another watch. It'll be a fun one. I can watch it with my kid, I think. It'd be a good one for that. But if you didn't already get the 4K, and you're like, do I want that for $25, even half off? $11.95 for the Blu-ray right there. From Hamilton Books. Not a sponsor. All right. This one also has a 4K. And I love this movie. And I actually have... Or at least I had, I think I sold it when I bought this. The Studio Standard Blu-ray. And usually I wouldn't buy a new Blu-ray of something I already have on Blu-ray. But when it is a 4K scan of a movie I love from a company I love, I'll give it a chance for a whopping eleven ninety five. And that is a movie I love called 12 Monkeys. This is a batshit crazy sci-fi movie from Terry Gilliam. There is no such thing as a movie that is not batshit crazy from Terry Gilliam. And I highly recommend it. This is one that I would say, hey, if you don't mind splurging on it, get the 4K. But it's a, it's a weird one. Brad Pitt is amazing in this movie. He got his first Best Supporting Actor nomination for this. Easily could have won back in the day. Luckily he has now, but if you like time travel, sci-fi, end of the world movies, 12 Monkeys is one for you. Here's one I've never seen. This does not have a 4K yet. Seems like it should or will. Uh, this one also has the slipcover. I've never seen this. I don't know if I mentioned that. I think I did. This is also from a 4K scan. It was also $11.95. It is a John Hughes movie. One of two that I wish I would have bought sooner because the other one's out of stock now. The other one is Weird Science, which just got a 4K. But Hamilton Books had their Steelbook from Arrow on there for $11.95 for a while. And I never pulled the trigger and now it's not on there anymore. So that's the problem with Hamilton Books. When you see something on there and you want it, you should probably get it. They also had Children of the Corn on 4K, which I'm not like a massive fan of, but for the price they were selling it at, I think it was $14.95. I wish I would have gotten it because it's not on there anymore either. But this one, 16 Candles. Like I said, I've never seen this one. I like John Hughes movies. I don't love John Hughes movies. That's kind of where I am. This one also has the slipcover. I'm surprised with how old this release is that it has a slipcover. Uh, should we open it and look at this one too? Yeah, why not, right? All right. Jeez, jiggle much? This is a cool slipcover. It's like matte right here where the windows are. I like the texture on it. See how it kind of shimmers in that specific spot? It's matte here, but glossy there. That's what I meant. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It doesn't have different artwork like the pitch black one does, but I assume inside, and I'm right, you can flip around this doodad here. Give me a minute. Give me just a minute. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Everything just fell out. Okay, it wasn't the disc at least. Kids nowadays, right? Kids nowadays and their drugs and alcohol. Okay. 
Give me a minute here, holy crap. All right, so what do we got here since I've already got it out of the case? We got a cool little uh, ad for White Fire. This movie looks awesome. What is that? Anyone seen that? Send me a copy if you like it. In the booklet. And, you know, standard arrow booklet. But what we all came to see, the original poster artwork on the other side of the case. Very cool. Reversible cover art is like one of the greatest things ever invented for physical media. <laughs> it's such a simple thing that sucked me right into Scream Factory when I first got into them, and it's pathetic how much it worked, to be honest. All right. <laughs> this one was $9.95, so even cheaper than the rest of them. This one right now is on Blu-ray, and it only has a Blu-ray so far, is $20 half off at Barnes & Noble. I got it for 10 and that is the Best Picture Nominated Film. So there's another one for that section of my shelf. Gosford Park, a Robert Altman film. I don't remember loving this movie, but I know I didn't watch the entire thing. So I do need to give it another chance. I'm not a huge Robert Altman fan, but this release at that price, also a 4K scan, by the way, with a great cast. It really does have a great cast. I believe it won original screenplay or adapted screenplay, one of the two, whichever one it was up for. Um, I don't recall. Sorry. My brain doesn't want to work right now. I'm very tired and I work in the morning. But I wanted to record this because I knew it was waiting for me at home. Gosford Park. So if you're going to risk buying it and watching it, if you don't know what it is, Hamilton Books, get it for 70% off or 75% off or whatever the retail value as opposed to 50% off at Barnes & Noble, like I said. Okay, this one is the only 4K I got. It does not have a slipcover, so the fact that it didn't come with one, I don't care, whatever. I don't really care anyways, if you can't tell. I'm just excited when they have them, especially when they're like four-year-old releases, like Pitch Black, it seems like. I mean, it's probably only really like two, three years old, but it seems a lot older. This is one I was very excited to get. Glad it was still in stock for $14.95. This one would be $24.95 at Barnes & Noble right now. Frankenstein, and this is Ken, I almost said Mary, Mary, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I'm not wrong, but Kenneth Branagh's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. He plays Frankenstein. Robert De Niro is the creature. I remember my parents renting this when it came out, and they said it sucked, so I can't wait to watch it, because it looks like a cheesy hoot and a half, as I always say. Uh, but I'm interested. And, you know, it was Robert De Niro's birthday this week, so... What better to watch than his brilliant turn as a guy sewn together from other people's body parts on 4K? So that is cool. See if they were if the 4Ks were all 15 bucks, I'd probably get them all. But 25 is pushing it for most movies, in my opinion, even half off. This one I grabbed just because it was on there, and I cannot resist an Arrow limited edition hard box at a reasonable price. I don't care what movie it is. I've never heard of this movie. I've never seen this movie. I will probably eventually watch this movie. I guarantee it's not going to be anytime soon with all the other stuff I need to watch. <laughs> so there. This is also... It's only a 2K scan, actually, but it's a much older Italian film, I believe. Mill of the Stone Women. So this is this big, hard box Blu-ray. This was 1995. So I believe half off at Barnes & Noble, this is um, 25 to 30 I would say, because they're usually $49.99 for a Blu-ray MSRP, one of these. There'd be, it'd be no cheaper than $25 at Barnes & Noble half off, I would say. And this was $19.95 on Hamilton Books. So I'm going to open this one too, because it's a big, awesome, chunky boy. And we all want to see what it looks like, especially me, because yay. Okay, here she is. The J card is very on there. I will just probably leave it on there for now. Because whatever. Alright, so it has two Blu-rays, if I'm not mistaken. This is the French and U.S. versions. And the other one is the Italian and English export version. So, two very different discs. Which I love. And as we always do with these, we will be flipping this over to see the cool original poster art. Because... Especially on old Italian horror movies, you know it's going to look cool. Not that the original art on the big box does not. So there's that. That's the original poster art. Very cool. Me likey. 
We have the poster. If it's not taped, I will open it for shits and gigs. I'm guessing the artwork is both of the... Oh, nice. That's cool. So there's the new artwork. At least I assume it's new artwork. It usually is. <laughs> and then this is a very cool poster on the back. Very old school poster. Mill of the Stone Women in Blazing Technicolor. And a nice chaunty booklet. About twice the size of the typical Blu-ray booklet, as we all know. But yeah, these Arrow limited edition box sets, I've said it a million times, are like my favorite type of release. 4K or Blu-ray, as long as it's a nice set, I don't care. I'm not prejudiced against physical media formats, I guess. Could be a CED for all I care. I'd probably buy it for 20 bucks. I got the 4K of Hills Have Eyes from Hamilton Books last year for 20 bucks, and that was all. So you can get some good ones on there. You just gotta be sharp about it and hope you can get it before it sells out. And their shipping is like $4, flat shipping. So I got all eight of these after tax and shipping and everything for like 116 I think, which isn't bad at all. Even after tax and shipping, it rounds up to like $14 a title. So not too bad. And what do we do with these? What's the best part of buying an Aero Limited Edition box set? The smell, we all know that, right? Let's do that. <sighs> Nothing like it. But that's it. Those are the eight Arrow video titles I got during the Arrow video sale, but not from Barnes & Noble, no. I wanted to get more bang for my buck with some kick-ass 4K restorated, restorated, restoration, restored, Really good looking Blu-rays from Arrow Video, who is one of, if not the best, boutique label out there. There's no argument there. Yeah, even when you downgrade to their Blu-rays over the 4Ks, for whatever reason, you're still getting a banger product regardless. So, happy to get all these in the collection finally. The sad thing is I'll probably watch 12 Monkeys first and it's the one on here that I've seen more than once, but I guess I like that movie a lot. But, thank you. Thank you for being here. Check out my Tee Public store. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Puck, shop, pop, movies.